In this tutorial, we're going to learn about the structure of the nervous system. The first aim is, can you identify the different types of receptors in the body? Then, can you compare the structure of the different types of nerve cells or neurons in the body? And finally, can you explain how nervous messages travel through the nervous system very briefly? So, have you ever walked out into the middle of the road and had to immediately recoil as a car approaches, which you didn't notice? Well, you can thank your nervous system for helping you survive that incident. The nervous system is incredibly important to our survival, which is why it is one of the first organ systems to develop when we're growing as a fetus. In fact, our nervous system is regarded so highly by our body that a third of the energy we consume goes towards powering the nervous system. So what does the nervous system actually do? Our nervous system allows our body to detect and respond to stimuli. Stimuli is plural for the word stimulus, and a stimulus is a change in our environmental conditions, for example, whether it gets hotter or brighter. There are cells in our body that have evolved to detect such changes, and we call these cells receptor cells. And these receptor cells can be found in specific organs we call receptor organs. So receptors are cells that detect stimuli. So our eyes are an example of a receptor organ, and they contain photoreceptors. These are cells that detect light, or changes in light. Next up are our ears, and ears contain cells that can detect changes in sound. Also, if you close your eyes, you'll notice that you have an awareness of how upright you are, and that's because in your ears, you have receptors that can detect balance as well. Next up is your skin. Your skin contains two types of receptors, cells that can detect temperature, or changes in temperature, and also changes in pressure. Your nose contains chemoreceptors. These are chemical detecting cells that allow you to detect smell. Finally, your tongue also contains chemoreceptors, and these can also detect specific chemicals linked to taste. Uh, for example, you'd be aware that we can detect the sensation of bitterness, saltiness, sweetness, and sourness. And very recently, we discovered another, a fifth type of receptor called umami receptors. And they can detect a kind of savory, mushroomy, cheesy, meaty type of flavor. If you ever wondered why we evolved to be able to sense certain specific flavours, well, think about it like this. Bitterness was important for detecting poisons in foods, uh, so we could avoid them. Saltiness is important for basically running our nervous system, so salts are important in running our nervous system. Sweetness, well, that's just a detector for carbohydrates, so a source of energy. Sourness for things which are spoiled and gone off to avoid being poisoned by food. And obviously savoury, things like meat and protein, things we need for growth and repair. Of course nowadays certain sour things and bitter things are actually pleasurable like coffee and uh, I don't know, lemon drizzle cake but um, certainly this would help our survival as early humans. And those are the different types of receptors in the body. So now let's look a little bit deeper at our nervous system and discover the real stars of the show which are the neurons or nerve cells. So our nervous system can be divided into two distinct components. Firstly, you can see in yellow here, we have the central nervous system, which consists of our brain and spinal cord, not the same as your spine. Notice how your spinal cord stops around here, so about 12 inches down from the head, um, whereas your spine would go all the way through. Your spine is bone, but spinal cord is a dense collection or bundle of nerves. Next up, on the periphery, on the outside of the central nervous system, we see all these uh, pink sort of lines. They represent nerves in the peripheral nervous system. So these feed off the uh, central nervous system and connect or join or synapse with other organs to send messages to them so we can respond. Um, so central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, CNS abbreviated, and peripheral nervous system, all the nerves that stem off the central nervous system and connect to organs. So the peripheral nervous system, also known as the PNS. Now there are three types of nerve cells or neurons that you need to know, but first let's look at the general structure of a nerve cell. So you'll instantly notice that nerve cells look quite different to normal body cells, and that's because they are very, very long. They have this cable-like section. Um, but they also have all the parts you'd expect to see in a normal cell, for example the nucleus, cytoplasm, cell membrane, and so on. So it's important to note at this stage that the job of the nervous system is to transmit electrical impulses. 
This is the fancy word for nervous messages. So in an exam, you would say that a nerve transmits electrical impulses. So this is the pathway an electrical impulse would take. Firstly, we arrive at the dendrons, these kind of branch-like um, structures. And the dendrons will then feed into the cell body. That's what you would recognize as a normal cell. Okay. The cell body then gets squashed and elongated into a part called the axon here. And then the axon ends with the axon terminals, which again, branch-like structures. Now, the reason why we have all these branch-like structures is so we can form connections with multiple receptors and other neurons as well. The nervous system is truly an intricate web of wiring. Over here, you'll see another interesting structure, which is something you won't find in all nerve cells. This is called the myelin sheath. So this neuron is a myelinated neuron. Now what the myelin sheath is, is basically rolls of fat which insulate the electrical signal that travels through the neuron or the axon of the neuron. This makes the signal stronger and faster. In fact, where the myelin sheath isn't present over here, you'll find in myelinated neurons the impulse jumps like this very rapidly along the axon so it delivers messages incredibly quickly. Some people have a condition, a neurodegenerative condition, where the myelin sheath starts to wear away. As a result, they start to lose coordination and brain function. This condition is known as multiple sclerosis. So just to review one more time, here's the electrical impulse. So it goes from dendron to cell body to axon, finally to axon terminal, where it will join with either other neurons or specific organs. So now let's look at the different types of neurons. First up is the sensory neuron. These are neurons that carry sensory information. In other words, information from our receptors to the central nervous system. So here we can see that the dendrons are synapsing with or connecting with a receptor. Okay. Once they've received information from the receptor, they transmit it as electrical impulses. So the electrical impulse travels from a large, long dendron, you can see a very long dendron here, to the cell body, and then a shorter axon, and then to the axon terminal, where it will synapse with the central nervous system. Next up are the relay neurons. Now, relay neurons litter the central nervous system. They're everywhere. They transmit electrical impulses from one part of the central nervous system to another part of the central nervous system. Again, they have a slightly different shape, you can see here. So we get but the same sort of structures. So we go from dendron to cell body to axon to axon terminal. But you'll see they have multiple dendrons and mul multiple axons. So finally, we have the motor neuron, and the motor neuron takes electrical impulses from the central nervous system and transmits them to effectors. Now, effectors are parts of the body that basically move. Think of motor for movement, so they basically move. So you have muscles which twitch and contract and so on, and you have glands which squeeze and secrete enzymes and hormones. So that's why I've drawn some spitting here, because you have salivary glands which release saliva. So motor neurons have relatively short dendrons, not like the massive ones on sensory neurons. We quickly get to the cell body, then the electrical impulse will travel down a relatively longer axon, and then it gets to the axon terminal, which will synapse with an effector this time. So that is how you can compare the structure of different types of neurons. So finally, Basically, how do electrical impulses get transmitted through the nervous system? Well, let's just connect up our nervous system to find out. So sensory connects to relay neurons in the central nervous system, and they will connect or synapse with motor neurons. Okay, so this is basically how it would work. Let's say we've got a stimulus. So I'm going to use pressure receptors in our skin. So imagine that this is a skin cell receptor. Now, if we apply a force or change in pressure like a pin prick, this is what will happen. We have electrical impulses being generated by the receptor. They get transmitted through the sensory neuron. The sensory neuron transmits the electrical impulse to a relay neuron in the central nervous system. The electrical impulse then travels to the motor neuron, which then arrives at an effector, and the effector will either contract uh, because in this case it would be a muscle. So if we've got a pinprick, we get a muscular contraction in our arm to move our hand away. 
Remember, some effectors, however, aren't muscles, they are glands. So equally, for example, if we've got a scare, um, uh, this motor neuron could synapse with an adrenal gland, which then secretes adrenaline, which has its own effect, our heart rate raises and so on. And that is how you can explain how nervous messages travel through the nervous system.